What's going on everyone? Welcome into the next part of our ultimate guide for Anno 1800. In the last one, we took a look at getting the engineers set up early game, getting their initial meet, uh, needs met, getting electricity started, and talked about how to deal with the early engineer phase. So I've skipped ahead a little bit and we're kind of actually at the end of the engineer phase. As you can see, we have all of their needs met except coffee. And under happiness, we have everything unlocked but only the basic stuff like variety theaters and rum have been met for here. We don't have penny farthings, pocket watches, or a bank yet. But I have constructed everything. Now, something you'll notice that I don't have anywhere is I don't have a steam motor assembly line. I don't have this built. Uh, of course, I don't have any bicycle factories yet, and I don't have any advanced weapons going on this island. The reason for that is because you don't really need a lot of steam motors at this point in the game. Yes, you can get cargo ships, and cargo ships do require steam motors. However, as you can see, I am doing perfectly fine with my population of about 9,600. Uh, there's 8,800 uh, on this island itself without cargo ships. Now, if you need that sort of capacity, go ahead and build the steam motor assembly line and get steam motors and build some cargo ships. If you don't need them, if you are perfectly fine with the capacity that you currently have, then there is no need to do that. And what do I mean by uh, don't need the capacity? Well, let's take a look at my trade routes here. My trade route right here is bringing over beef, red pepper, and zinc from down here on Tarek. I'm only, I'm not even transporting a full 50 tons and I'm not even dropping off all of the zinc. I don't need all of the zinc yet. So I only need three cargo slots. I could even get away with having two schooners on this route for a total maintenance of 30 and for two influence. I don't even need a clipper on this route. This is a very simple route. I don't need that many goods on it. Uh, similar to our hops one right here, it's bringing over the hops, grain, and iron it's dropping it all off and it's enough to last me for the time being later on i might need to bring over a little more grain so i could change this over to bringing over a hundred grain and then that or i could add a schooner just to bring over the grain itself there's a few different options there now this would be a route you could put a cargo ship on and bring over say uh two tons of each two hops two grain and two iron if you need it so you could do a cargo ship on that one if you needed it. Same with this one. You could do that later. Right now, I don't need it. My rum transport route is actually doing perfectly fine with two clippers on it. It's bringing over enough rum to sustain my population. I don't need any more than this right here. I don't need a cargo ship. Just because you have access to cargo ships doesn't mean you have to build them immediately. Build them when you need them. Uh, if you have enough money and you really don't want to have to deal with building them the steam motors yourself, you could also, if you have the Sunken Treasures DLC, go buy a stack of 20 from Old Nate in Cape Trelawney. He does sell them. They are kind of pricey. But if you have the uh, a coin available, just go ahead and buy them. It's not going to be a big deal. So there's different reasons why you might not need cargo ships. Again, just because you have to build, just because you can build something does not mean you have to. Do it when you need it. Advanced weapons is another thing. You know, advanced weapons is an extraordinarily expensive chain. It's 2200 just for the Heaven's Heavy Weapons Factory. The Dynamite Factory is another 1000 Then you have to add in the Saltpeter Works, which you need two of. That's another 1000 And then, of course, the rest of it is fairly cheap. But these parts right here are very expensive. What do you need advanced weapons for? Are you building ships that require them? Do you need the ships that require them? Probably not. Can you sell them for money? Yes, you can. But selling goods does not add to your per minute balance. It only adds to your total coins. So while you are making money, you're taking away from your total income per minute balance just to make some extra coin. I don't really think that's a good idea because you need this balance to build things you actually have to have, like penny farthings or pocket watch stuff to get some more money from luxury needs. So consider stuff before you build it. Just because you have it unlocked doesn't mean it has to be done. One thing you definitely always want to build once you unlock it 
is a bank. Banks make a ton of money. A bank is a very costly building to build, and it does have a 1,000 maintenance cost. However, once you build it, you're going to bring in quite a bit of cash. Let's go ahead and plop this down. We're at 99.82. Let's see what happens. Up to 12,000 now. So, uh, what, just just about 2,000, 2,100-ish coins just from the bank, just for these small amount of engineers I currently have. I think I have about 84 homes. Yeah, I've got 84 engineer homes. That's all. That's not many at all, honestly. And that's giving me 2,000 coins just from those handful of engineers. The bank is something you definitely, definitely want to have in your game. Now, before we go take care of today's episode, I want to quickly address something a few people have been asking about in the comments, and that is talking about more advanced stuff such as item combinations, uh, specialist stuff, tips and tricks for working conditions and stuff like that. I do want to say that, yes, I do want to talk about those things, but I consider that stuff slightly more advanced in terms of game mechanics. These guides are really more directed at beginners or people just kind of struggling or want to learn the basics of the game. Things like item setups, specialists, optimizations and efficiency, all of that sort of stuff, uh, Docklands included, the Docklands DLC stuff, all of that is what I consider far more advanced tips and tricks and outside the scope of what I wanted to teach on these videos. Uh, I will be covering that kind of stuff later. I do plan on several videos with more advanced tips and tricks for those of you who are looking for some more meat to dig your teeth into. Uh, I do plan on some of that stuff later on, but I do want to get through some more of the more basic stuff for the game to begin. So let's get ready to dive in to today's actual episode and what we're going to be covering. Uh, as we saw earlier, we do have pretty much everything met except that coffee need, which we need to be heading back to the New World to get our obreros up and running. I've also done quite a bit of rearranging. Of course, the, the uh, last one we talked about moving our industry together around a single tr a single power plant, which we are still utilizing down here with most of our industry. We have some industry over here that is near this power plant as well, so that's perfectly fine. I can fill in some of these blank spots with more industry later. Also, moved all we've moved all of our farms up here. Don't be afraid to do rearranging. Rearranging is really, really helpful, so don't be afraid to rearrange your city. I've rearranged quite a bit right here, added in new roads, taken away roads, just to make everything fit in a little bit nicer. So don't be afraid to do rearranging as you advance your city. It's just a natural part of the game, and you shouldn't be afraid to use that lovely bulldoze tool to go through and take out a bunch of stuff if it's not to your liking, or if space requirements need to... Uh, expand in some different directions so you have more room to play with. So with our near 10,000 population, our 12k income, a city that is nicely balanced, everything is as it should be coming in, and I have all of my uh, statistics all taken care of. You can see under our consumer goods, everything is looking nice and lovely. Uh, some things are per almost perfectly balanced, like our canned food right here, which we'll need more later, obviously. But for right now, everything is balanced and we have a functioning working city that does not have a balance going all over the place, which is what you are looking for. If your balance is going all over the place, something's wrong. Your balance should generally not move. It should stay like that unless you are adding homes or upgrading stuff. It should generally stay in one place. So let's head to the new world and let's get the Obreros online. All right, so here we are back on Pombo, which I uh, I do apologize. This is not Spanish. This is Portuguese. I would have been informed multiple times. This is Portuguese, not Spanish. My apologies. I'm a, uh, I, I'm a senseless American. I don't know these things. Uh, but anyways, so we're ready to get the uh, Abreros up and running. Abreros are really easy to get to, obviously. Ornoleros only have two actual, two real needs you have to fulfill, the plantains and the ponchos. Marketplace is an obvious thing. So we have to get our Obreros up and running. They are really, really easy. So we are going to go ahead. I'm going to get the Obrero stuff upgraded, get some in the town and get started on the first production chains. And we will talk about some tips and tricks about your Obreros when we come back. All right. So we have our first set of Obreros in here. We have about 156 right now, give or take. I have gone ahead and expanded out everything a little bit as well. Again, just like with the old world residences, as you expand into the Obreros tier, they will consume double the amount of the goods of the Ornoleros. So double the rum, double the ponchos, and double the fried plantains. 
So I've added some more industries to catch up with that, same as we have been doing in the old world. I've also had to expand, you know, our rum production just to keep up with the old world as well, because uh, engineers consume a crap ton of rum. They love their rum, so you need lots and lots of it. Now I have it all right here, nice and tidy in this area. Now for our tortillas and everything, of course, they do take two cattle farms and two corn farms. Now, again, this is something that I really, really stress. If you have the Bright Harvest DLC or if you don't have the Bright Harvest DLC, get it for this reason. Get those silos on those cattle farms. That way they produce all the cattle you need for one tortilla maker from one cattle farm. Again, that is probably one of the most useful DLCs next to Docklands is something like this. So definitely, definitely want to do that. Now, so something a lot of people, I think, make a mistake on when they get to the Abrera tier is they start building like clay pits and brick factories everywhere. I don't think you should do this. And why not? And it's because bricks are not needed in large quantities in the new world. Unlike in the old world where you need bricks for like all sorts of stuff, including like upgrading homes and many of the factories need lots and lots of bricks. You don't really need a lot of bricks here. The most time you're going to be spending uh, with bricks is if you are upgrading your roads in the new world to pave streets. And as you are building some of your factories and stuff here, uh, the fuel stuff, fuels and electricity does take a little bit of bricks. But beyond that, you don't need much. What I suggest doing instead is just bringing it over manually from the old world. Get a couple of clippers or a cargo ship, whatever you got, load it up with some bricks several times and just ship bricks down here and just keep a stock of bricks coming in from the old world. You could even just have like an island in the old world dedicated to making bricks from a couple of clay pits. Workers are far easier and less space intensive than the obreros because you, you need obreros for more important stuff like your coffee, your cigars, uh, fuel, electricity, uh, not electricity, but the oil stuff down here. You need obreros for a lot more things in the new world than you do workers in the old world. So I would suggest making bricks down up there and then maybe setting up a trade route or just bringing it down manually. However you want to go about doing that is up to you. I would not spend the time and waste the obrero workforce to make bricks down here. Once we get to the coffee chain, the coffee chain itself takes 150 obreros just to work one coffee roaster. That's quite a few, you know, and space in this region is very, very limited. As a lot of people keep saying, they're like, hey, I need to know how I'm supposed to deal with the space in the new world. Again, that's a more slightly more ish advanced stuff that I'll get to probably in another episode talking about um, handling space in the new world. But for right now, you know, you just need to utilize every single tile and as much workforce as possible. Spending that workforce on something as useless as bricks in this region, not worth it. Don't even worry about building them here. Just bring them in from the other regions. So once you have your basic stuff going, you have your tortillas and everything, all you do now is just a copy paste of getting yourself up to 300 obreros to unlock the coffee chain. All right, so we've got our 300 obreros now we have the coffee unlocked as well as the boxing arena the gold mine and some of our bigger harbor buildings including the public mooring and a pier if you need it gold mines are a thing in the new world but to be honest with you uh even though you know we do specifically look for islands that have good gold mine adjacencies to a trade union there's so many other ways to get gold uh such as specialists the arctic with the passage dlc uh, buying it from Eli, you could buy gold bars directly from the pirates. So just because you can build the gold mines doesn't mean you need to do it right now. There is something with the gold mines we will talk about later that makes them actually worth getting, but it does take a lot of setup and everything. So we're going to kind of skip the gold mines for the time being. Now, our people needed some coffee and you do need two coffee plantations for every one coffee roaster and you're going to need a lot of coffee. We take a look. We've got an island right here of Jerakku, uh, Jerakku, uh, Jerakku, Jerakku. That's how you say it. Jerakku here that has our coffee on it, and this is likely where I will get our coffee beans from. 
And then I'm going to transport it up here to produce coffee and then send the coffee on to the old world. But there's another little trick you can do. So in the old world, there's obviously Madame Kahina. She sells coffee at a cost of 200 coins per ton. Now, that is a little pricey, but at the same time, it's a really good way to get your coffee coming in from her until you have it going in the new world. I like to buy goods that are supplemental, just like I'm buying ore from Eli. I like to buy these goods from Madame Kahina to help supplement the amount that I am using on my main islands. Now, her replenishment rate varies depending on your current uh, progression in the game. But basically how it goes is it starts, once it's unlocked, it starts replenishing at a rate of five per minute. That is on normal difficulty settings. On advanced and expert, it decreases considerably. But on normal difficulty settings, this replenishes at five per minute. Uh, later on, towards the end game, which end game for Anno terms is 1,000 investors and 25,000 global population, it replenishes at a rate of 7 per minute. That's not bad, guys. 5 per minute? Like, that one coffee roaster won't even do 5 per minute. The coffee roaster itself produces every 30 seconds. That's 2 per minute at a cost of 150 maintenance per minute. So she sells five per minute. So that is what? Two and a half, two and a half coffee roasters. So the price comes out slightly more expensive. Yes, but you're not having to ship it all the way over from the new world. And it's a good supplement. Plus at this point in the game, you should be making more than enough balance and more than enough from your active trades to be able to afford the purchase of those goods from her. So that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to set up a trade route to Madame Kahina, and we're going to buy some of these goods from her. We're going to buy one ton or one cargo slot of rum and one cargo slot of coffee. We're going to put this in our AI trade routes, and we're going to get that set up and running now, I'm still going to go ahead and get our coffee chain set up here in the new world because we do need it. Uh, five tons per minute is, I mean, it's a lot, but it's not much. We currently need, I believe it is three tons per minute of coffee. I actually need four tons per minute. So we're actually almost done, capped out on how much she can uh, supply to us. Once she can no longer supply five tons per minute, or if you're in late game with a thousand investors and 25,000 global population, the seven tons per minute that she replenishes, which by that point in the game, you have probably far surpassed seven tons per minute. But once you have gone past that, she cannot sustain your consumption anymore and you'll need coffee roasters. But it is a good idea to go ahead and buy that early on from her and get that coming in to help with your consumption so you don't need as many coffee roasters. Coffee roasters do take a lot of abreros, so it's always a good idea to supplement. So I'm going to go ahead, get all of our coffee set up and running. I'm going to get some caoutchouc up and running and going back to the old world so we can start supplying our people with the last few goods that they need and get on to investors. All right, so we finally have everything going. Our first things of caoutchouc have come in and we are supplying the penny farthings finally. Of course, we have the coffee coming in a little bit from the New World, mostly from Madame Kahina at the moment, but it is perfectly fine. And in the New World, our obreros, that's not where I wanted to be. Yeah, our obreros over here do have access to coffee as well. Our next milestones are at 600 obreros and 1,000 obreros. Uh, we'll need those later on. 600 gets us access to chocolate. And at 1,000, we'll have access to cigars, which we need also for our investors. So these are investor level stuff. We're not going to worry about getting those unlocked right now. You can go ahead and get all of it done if you want to. Go ahead and get it unlocked. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to do it at this very moment. We're going to focus on investors in the next episode. We have everything we need. We're making about 13K. We have a little over 10,000 population. Lots of money in the bank. Lots of influence to spend. And we are ready to move into the end game uh, of the base game deal, base game content, minus any DLCs like High Life and Tourist Seeds and all that kind of stuff, but at least to get to the investors and start really rolling in the dough and dealing with some more space issues as we expand and need a lot more stuff for those investors. 
So before we leave off, let's talk about a couple of other small little tips and tricks that we can show you. Uh, the first is about your trade routes. Now, you have, may have noticed earlier, I had said something about putting a trade route under the AI category. So what was I talking about? Well, we have the ability to make categories in our trade routes. I have some trade routes here that really I would like to have in their own categories, anything coming from the new world specifically. So what I can do is find one of those routes, tell it to create a new group, and it puts it underneath a new group. Then we're going to go to our little drop down menu, hit rename group. And I'm going to call this new world to old world. So these are all of my routes that are going from the new world to the old world, uh, old world. So I'm going to move all of these underneath here that deal with that. Now I have one route right here that is specifically about the new world only. So again, I'm going to go right here, create a new route rename that route and it is as easy as that you cannot uh you cannot do anything with the charter routes specifically they can only go within their own type of categories if you have charter routes going but your regular trade routes can all be categorized under their own stuff it's a really really nice way to keep everything organized so if i'm trying to like redo an ai trade route I know that I can just go right here and look for them. How you name them, of course, is completely up to you. I just let the default naming because I can just look at the goods being moved around and know what is going on with it. Now, this is a little tip that was uh, reminded to me because I kind of forgot about talking about this by a Reddit user named Lorelei. And that is when I was talking about purchasing items at Eli's Harbor, I forgot to mention something about it. When you're re-rolling, as you keep re-rolling and bumping up the cost, don't worry about how expensive it gets because it will reset. The rerolled, the reroll cost does reset back down to 5,000 roughly every five minutes or so. This right here, this timer right here has nothing to do with this. This has to do with the purchasable items. You can only purchase up to 20 items at a time. And then you have to wait for this timer right here to go away and count down to zero. And then this right here will become uh, 20 again. We'll just show that real quick since we're almost done with the uh, restock time. I'm going to go ahead and buy something. Let's just uh, see. What do I want? What do I want? All right. So I bought an actor. As you can see, the purchasable item has gone down to 19. After a minute and 27 seconds is up, this right here will change back to 20. And as you can see, we're now at a 29 minute timer or a 30 minute timer minus a few seconds, and it's gone back to 20. So that is what those timers right there are for. And that's how the purchasable items system works. And one little note, if any keen eyed people have noticed, guess what I still don't have? I still don't have a steelworks. I don't have a steel work still, and I have 700 steel beams in storage, and I still have a ton of money. This just goes to show that you don't have to have a steel works unless you're trying to blitz through building things and you need a lot more steel than what Archie can supply you. If you are, then you probably do need a steel works. But if you just enjoy yourself, take your time. Don't blitz through the game. This is not a game that you're that is you know meant to be beat the game meant to be enjoyed and take your time with it. You can totally get away with not having certain things like the steelworks. You could probably even get away with not having brick factories because Archie sells bricks. Same with timber. You get away with not having that stuff because you could just buy that from him. So that's certainly something to consider is just because you can build it doesn't mean you have to. Just like I said earlier, I don't need steelworks because I get plenty of steel from Archie. Another thing that several people have noticed and asked about is I'm actually not using specialists. I do have a town hall, but there's nothing in it. I have a trade union with nothing in it. I have another one blueprinted that it has not been built yet. I do have a harbor master right here that has a savvy customs officer, but that's just giving me a few extra of a chance of five tons of weapons, dynamite, advanced weapons, or sales, a 20% chance on passive trade. But this doesn't really have any impact on my economy as a whole. So I am not really using anything to boost my economy or my residences. A lot of people are under the assumption that you have to use items and specialists in order to get to the later stages of the game. And that is just absolutely not true, as you can see here. 
We're doing really well with money. We're doing great with our total coin, our influence, our happiness. Our attractiveness is a bit shabby right now because of the vulgarity and pollution. But don't worry, we will be taking, of that, uh, taking care of that soon and really pushing that attractiveness through the roof really, really quickly here soon. But beyond that, I have been able to do all of this with no items or specialists. That's just to show you that you don't have to play the items and specialist game unless you want to. So with that, guys, that is it for me today for this part of the guide. This gets you through the rest of the engineer phase and gets you ready for the investors. So in the next one, we will be coming back, upgrading to that tier and starting supplying those uh, happiness needs and basic needs and getting them taken care of. With that... Have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, be sure to leave me a like and a comment down below. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.